Me and uh, Dr. Tom Barber is going to talk a little bit about weed control, especially in northeast Arkansas, mm -hmm. right? The yep. epicenter of weed resistance, yep. as I call it. Uh, I'm right across the river, Chuck Farr from Crawfordsville, Arkansas. I'm a diehard Razorback fan, I'll tell you that. First off, my blood bleeds red for the Razorbacks. But I saw this sign going down in the interstate back there in football season that said, Go Hogs, please beat somebody. And, you know, coming off two two back to back two win seasons in football is pretty rough. So maybe there's brighter things ahead. So a little bit about cotton. Anybody that's from Mississippi, Delta Gold, that's what it's all about right there. One of my Italian farmers laid that cotton bowl up with a hundred dollar bill and he said, Take a picture of this. He said, and I always remember. Uh, a lot of cotton. Cotton has been real good for us in northeast Arkansas and throughout the Mississippi Delta. Crittenden County, right across the river, northeast Arkansas, that's where I'm at. Kind of rough up in that part of the world. Y'all didn't know consultants, we wear a lot of hats most of the time. In part psychiatrists and pathologists and weed scientists and farm manager and office manager and I miss anything else. General General Flunkies, I guess. Whipping board. <laughs> yeah, whipping boards most of the time. That's exactly right. I need, I need to add that one on there. We're the first line of defense between yield and not making yield. And you're the reason they didn't make it. Yeah, that's right. And, yeah. and I'll tell you in the fall when the phone don't ring, that's a real good thing. <laughs> Ain't nobody bitching about yield. Things we do on a daily basis and I will tell y'all that I Every time I do a presentation, weed resistance is our biggest issue and the driving force on which just about every decision in production agriculture, regardless of crop, is made in my part of the territory. Now, I'm in Crittenden County. I'll, I go all the way down across from Tunica in, in the Arkansas side, Horseshoe Lake, up to Mississippi County, a little bit in St. Francis and across but right on the edges. We deal with storms like everybody else, and more storms. We got planter tillage problems like everybody else. We work for the best farmers in the country. <laughs> what can I say? You know, 32 years, they're still farming, and they, I guess they like me. They keep me around. Long and, and look at here. I asked one of my farmers, he said, I ain't got no Yeti. He said, I use enough planter type that I just throw me some beer in there and I bag of ice every day. He said, that's my Yeti. Right there. So we know how to improvise. We know how to manufacture. Got a lazy bowl on the back of the spot spray rig and the turn, the turn, turn row sprayer with a beach umbrella, man. I'm sure there's a Yeti up there somewhere, a top good with some beer in it somewhere. Bottom line is our technology's played out and it played out a long time ago. And we'll kind of get around to some of my opinions uh, what's changed. We got resistant pigweed. And it's resistant to a multitude of chemistries. Giant ragweed, ryegrass, marestail, Johnson grass, goosegrass, barnyard grass. Not documented, but probably so, right? It's out there. Just mentioned a few. I'm it's sure across the river. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's more. We we'll blame it all on Tennessee, can we? Yeah. Giant ragweed, can't kill it. Resistant weeds for 2020. How in the world are we ever going to manage them? I don't know how we managed them in the past. Somehow we're making it. They ain't making it the right way, but we're making it. Resistant pig weeds. Y'all can read all that. Oh, that don't work anymore. Now what do we do? I hear that every day of the week. Record pig weed. I couldn't resist on that picture. I think it was 15 foot tall and 12 feet wide, and I'm probably a few inches off one way or another there. Cotton and crop production 2020, biggest expense in my part of the world still continues to be equipment, rent, or fixed cost insurance, BS expense, that's what I call your cell phone and your bolts that you go to the parts store, you don't ever add that in, it's uh, 20 to $40 an acre. Weed control, even with generics on the market. We're spending between $100 and $125 an acre for weed control and cotton. Spending a $100 bill in soybeans. Praying we don't have to chop cotton. Rice is around $150 an acre. 
We're throwing everything but the kitchen sink at it, and we still got a mess on our hands a lot of times. And remember, Arkansas is the most restrictive state in the nation right now. As far as I know, anything changed on that that, that you know of? Not that I know of. For Dye County. And that partially is increasing our production costs, and when you increase our production costs and the amount of money that we're spending on weed control, it's hurting us in other places like mixed fertilizer, cutting back on mixed fertilizer and stuff like that. We got pig weeds. We got more pig weeds. Can't kill them. No matter what you do. You can hold them, they're coming back. You see that one's been chopped off three times. Keeps coming. Multiple growing points, been chopped off, came right back. See it in every field we walk. That's the most fascinating, remarkable weed I've ever seen in my life. What about resistance? Yeah, that's a pretty good sign, some resistance there, I'd say. I'm not a big I'm not a big fan that says we don't have some issues with glufosinate because we do. Uh, we don't put out the right rates. I'll be the first person to tell you that. We probably don't put out the right rates with the right tips. We use them whatever greenway put in the spray rig to go to the field, to get out there, to cover acres. We sure ain't putting out the right water volume. We're doing everything wrong. That's probably why we're in the mess we're in right now. Unfortunately, a lot of everybody looks like that. Spraying weeds way too big because we can't get across the acre because we ain't got enough spray rigs or the wind's howling all the time. It's war. <clears throat> War every day of the week. Now you understand why weed control dominates every decision we try to make. And I'll tell you, that's not relying on the overtop application. That field right there has got a burn down on it, plus multiple modes of action behind the planter, and then an over the top application. Hand weeding <clears throat> ain't real practical. But there's a lot of it that goes on. And I'll tell y'all that if you're in northeast Arkansas and you're growing cotton, you got one of these. <laughs> you got a hoe crew with you. And the hoe crew's out there <laughs> with one of these too. And I'll tell you, the cotton that I consult on this past year and the year before that, you didn't go buy a field that didn't have one of these in it with a hoe crew. What's that costing? That's up on the herbicides, or don't get our pre's activated or residuals activated. That's another hundred dollar bill flush down the acre. Well, hundred dollar bill per acre flush down the tube. We got to be better stewards. I don't know how. We got to be. We got to start somehow. Do something. That's not practical. All that weed seed bank right there. When that field cultivator comes in the field, it's going to drag it all right back out out in the field. There's your hose. <laughs> Middle of summer, ain't got time. Big weed control, yeah. Jack Nicholson is my favorite. I couldn't resist, man. We own it. We own it all we can. <laughs> so we came out with zero tolerance. Man, this is going to be awesome. Actually, I think this is from Central Arkansas. Had the ability to clean things up pretty good. Went out there and pulled, pulled pig weed plants. I think they're done all right. You get up northeast Arkansas, we pig weeds galore. You can't win. 95% control is not enough. And I know Dr. Northworthy showed some slides today that 95% on the bar chart look really, really good. Ain't good enough. Not in my part of the world when it's a numbers game. All pig weed seed. That was mowing. Mowing, mowing down turn rows, mowing, mowing pilot pipe rows. That's all pigweed in the bucket right there. I could not resist that. I actually put this on Twitter, and I don't do much on Twitter. This pigweed was literally chopped off, and that is all that one single root is all that's holding it in the ground. And it was as viable and growing as much as any other pigweed around that hadn't been chopped. And I can tell you that pigweed right there, I think it was about three foot tall. It ain't going nowhere. As soon as the pilot pipe water, water from the pilot pipe gets through there, 
It's <laughs> fixing to swamp us. Multiple growing points, we all know that. Wherever you chop it, mow it, do whatever you do to it, it's coming back. Pigweed everywhere. You can see it down 55, that's at the courthouse in Marion. On every road, in the bridge, I see some. The big M bridge, just watch when you go across the bridge, you'll see it. It's in the concrete. How's our production soybean feel? That's in Caribbean County. You can actually see the beans are still left there. Just kind of combined around it. Well, ugly. Numbers game. And I'm not going to go through the math, but this is where the 95% come in. Still got 12,000 per acre based on one plant. Can't win. I got to get up around 98% before you even think about it. 95% won't get the whole crew out there to get you back clean. And I don't know if you can see that, but that's a truck key right there. And I think there's 10 pigweed right there in that little area. Mm. That's every field we walk just about. If I'm not scaring you about pigweeds, I need to be. If I'm not scaring you enough, I'll invite every person in this room to come ride with me anytime you want to. I'll make you sick. 95% ain't enough. Here's Crowley's Ridge. Those of y'all who are not familiar with Arkansas, this is 100% this is opinionated right here. But I'm going to tell you, this side of the ridge has historically been rice producing area of the state of Arkansas. This side of the ridge historically been the Delta, cotton farms. I can tell you that a cotton farmer is scared to death of 2,4-D, beyond belief. Feels real comfortable with dicamba, scared to death of 2,4-D. Guess what a rice farmer likes? A rice farmer loves 2,4-D. They feel comfortable with it. They've used it. They don't like dicamba. Been a lot of enlist crops on this side of the ridge. I'm hoping they use label products. If they don't, it's going to come across this side of the ridge. We're going to have another problem on our hands. I'm praying they use the right product. So this got loose a couple years ago. What was that? 06. 06? Yeah. Boy, <laughs> you, boy, you spit <laughs> that one out quick. Yeah. Yeah. That that, let's, let's hope that don't happen again. This side of the ridge, predominantly extend crops. Definition of insanity is the same thing over and over and over again, expect a different outcome. That's where we're at right now. We do the same thing over and over again. We ain't got much to work with. That's why we do the same thing over and over again. We're rotating crops. We're doing a few things different. So where did we get here? That's the that's, that's, that's big take home question. I don't know how we got here, how Critton County got here, how my farmers got in this position, but I have a few thoughts here. Cocoa Burn Morning Glory dominated our weeds 25 years ago. Did a lot of plowing. Put out a lot of DSMA, MSMA, Dire X got her in. Guess what? BXN Cotton came along. Mm -hmm. The whole country was BXN Cotton. Mm -hmm. Did a great job. Missed a secondary weed in that time, pigweed. Didn't burn it. Piss it off. Probably the start of our seed bank. Control pigweed yellows and ALSs. They became resistant real quick. Real quick. I never will forget DuPont brought staple out. Jim, I'll pick on DuPont for a second. Staple, man, it's fixing to be the savior of all saviors. I thought that was another time. <laughs> 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 Woo! I don't even think we got a year out of it. Once again, new technology came along, Roundup Ready. Got to the point we tried to kill big pigweeds. Prices were depressed at the time. We're trying to kill pigweeds this, this tall, man, you go out there with 20 ounces of Roundup d pack, whatever you wanted, man, and bend them down, kill them graveyard dead, man. Looky here, looky here, we got something clean. We're going to spray Monday through Thursday, go to late Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Resistance. Didn't take long. What's next? Mentality is there's something new coming. We got something new coming. <laughs> uh -uh. Nope. Started using more residuals, more residuals, burn down, pre-emerge, environment. Sometimes that rain get them activated, sometimes it didn't. 
sword bangs, Valor, glyphosate, prefix, provide control, Flexstar, Flexstar GT, just to name a few. Guess what? Wasn't a lot left in the toolbox. We're taking the tools that we had and we just kept using them over and over and over. Oh, guess what? That was back when beans were about $13, $14 a bushel, too. Losing the battle, we had to change. Ain't nothing left in the toolbox. Where I'm at right now, ain't much there. Think outside the box. Hey, we started rotating with corn. That helped. And it's helping right now. We used to be plant more grain sorghum than anybody in the state of Arkansas. I'm sure cane aphids kind of carried us out of that. And we would get back to grain sorghum if we had some good control measures for sure cane aphids. Start clean, continue to apply residuals. I think Dr. Northworth said today, don't ever let them come up. And that's what we try to do. Wrong droplet size, wrong spray tips, doing what we can. Can't depend on OT applications. Change some row spacing, change plant <coughs> populations. I'm all about variable rate technology on planters. I can't thin my seed and rate down. I need my seed out there. Help me, help me get the canopy. That's why we use seed treatments. Get the crop out of the ground growing. Get me the canopy. We've done some cover crops, mineral burning, bringing back old products. Guess what? We're using dicamba. We're using Enlist. 24D, Direx, Cotteran. <laughs> Ain't much left, guys. Where are we in now? This is where we're at. Direx, Cotteran. We put brake on every acre of cotton we got. Have to. Ain't got a choice. We got to. It's the best thing we got. Not to mention tank mixes. Outlook, Warrant Duel. Duel's not doing much for us anymore. I don't know that uh, Warren's doing a whole lot for us. Liberty crops, we're putting too much on Liberty for control weed crops. And it's not my fault, it's not my grower's fault. We don't have anything else. If we can't use dicamba, <clears throat> we got a mess on our hands. Stand technology, good over the top, still putting much on the dicamba. We're not going into a situation that we're going to rely on dicamba. We're not going to rely on Enlist. We're going to still rely on our residuals to try to maintain what chemistry we got. Because I'm telling you right now, with what Dr. Steckel has seen in West Tennessee, and I'm sure 24D technology is not too far behind it, we're done. There is nothing else. And I'll tell you all, for as much trouble as I have, and my cotton and soybeans, my rice is just as bad. And this looks pretty good. We don't have uh, we don't have the soybean varieties that we need. Remember, I'm on this side of the ridge. I'm historically a cotton area. We've had a few <coughs> bad instances with some enlist technology. Don't take much in grass. We didn't. We won't even talk about grass. I'm not even gonna go there. I uh, will say this, not being able to tank mix glyphosate with our dicamba has probably helped us some by forcing us to put select in with our dicamba applications. Yeah, this, this is my, my fear is we're going to have so much resistance to dicamba before our state will have a chance to take use for a full growing season of the technology. It may. <laughs> Where are we at right now? I don't know. We'll see. This is my big one right here. Secondary metabolism, I may not even be talking about that right. Preach on, brother. Seems like in my part of the world, it's glowing in the dark right now. It continues to glow in the dark. I pick, I pick on Doc, both Docs, three Docs. Hey, I got two Arkansas weed scientists doing research work in two fields I scout. What does that tell you? They're there doing research work because resistance is so bad? Man, I ain't got a snowball's chance. May 25th, ain't helping us. It's hard to make that application and over the top. And that's what we, we desperately need something. Ingenia, Extendamax, Enlist, which Enlist doesn't have a cutoff. Once again, I'm on this side of the ridge. Growers are scared of the 24D.
We're going in the dark. We are the epicenter of resistance. Is that a fair statement, Doc? Pretty yeah, close. You're, right. you're ground zero. Pretty close. Ground yeah. zero. Free weeds for your own. That's a pretty good sign. Maybe somebody will come and get pig weeds and make salads. I see you pull up pig weed on Google pig weed and it's all about making salads and stuff. It ain't about weed control, it's about eating it. <laughs> Maybe smoking it, I don't know. <laughs> so here's where we're at. Glyphosate resistant. PPO's resistant. Group 15's resistance. I think there's some documented resistance there too, isn't it? Trefland Prowl, Staple in Vogue. I think Dr. Steckel has already made that one. How about some Liberty? Ain't been documented. It's coming real quick. You eliminate that, guess what we got left? That's what I'm making a crop on right now. Gene and the List, Stenomax, Direx and Cotton, Direx. Cotterin, Liberty Break, MSMA, Zamoxone, Group, whatever you want to call it, steel. This hoe right here. Because you're not growing cotton in my part of the world without a hoe crew. Period. It's ugly. You can ride up and down I-55 all you want to in July. You're going to see a lot of that going on. We got a lot of tough decisions to be made in 2020. And this poor farm right here, he can't decide if he wants beets nut or if he wants some skull or if he wants to smoke a cigarette. And I imagine if you look in the truck, you've got multiple bottles of whiskey in there too, or maybe some vodka and trying to figure out whether he wants to drink or smoke or do all three of them at the same time. And that's kind of where we're at. But you do see that cotton bowl right there, don't you? So we're making a crop somewhere, somehow away. First you don't succeed, keep trying. You're really screwed. Well, guess what? We really screwed. Ain't much left in the toolbox. I had to throw this one in there. You're going to see the sign all in northeast Arkansas. We really need something. I keep harping on enlist. We, we have the ability to use enlist. My farmers really need the ability to, to utilize this technology just for the fact that we just don't have much in the toolbox. May 25th ain't where we need to be. And I understand the issues that go with that. <coughs> Other than that, once again, I told y'all I was a diehard Razorback fan and my blood bleeds. Maybe we'll have a little bit better football team next year than we got this year. How'd I do? Did I leave you some time? I, oh, I don't know. I don't know. When are we supposed to? It's fine. Worry about it. We got time. I'll answer any questions that anybody got one. Well, you got your break on your cotton acres. Uh, we're usually going. We're usually going uh, direct early in a burn down, and then coming back with a mox on break, and then coming behind that as quick as we can, trying to get warm outlook or something like that out, and watching what we do, and then it's Roundup Liberty tank mix. And and Doc made a great point this morning about my guys have put their hoods hoods up. We we got to get our hoods back out. It's this. It's trying to go 18 miles an hour over the top, cover acres. It's not where we need to be. I don't know where we're going to be on cotton acres this year unless the market starts buying some acres. What are y'all doing with ryegrass? Anything other than select? Early? That's it. And, and, I, and believe it or not, I'm in an area that so far, ryegrass ain't been a real problem for us yet. But we're sure watching. We're watching the guys in Mississippi a bunch. We know it's coming. We got more Johnson grass problems than we got rye grass problems resistance. Do you have anybody that you keep saying that we need the right novel, the right gallons, and all that, doing it closer to right over a long period of time has been more successful? Most successful guys are the ones that's doing rotation and doing a good rotation. The problem with our rotation over there, the landowners dictating the crop to be planted because they want that rent check. They want that high dollar rent check. So that's that's playing a lot of a lot of that's a lot of our problems over there. Especially in rice. You got you got landowners just demanding three years continuous rice. Mm -hmm. So you got rice followed by rice followed by rice. Derek Derek Derek's in here, he knows he, he knows where I'm at on rice. It's a jungle, isn't it? Bam. 
It's bad. You know, it's it's a whole other gamut of weed species. But somehow or another, we're still making a crop. I don't know how, but it's getting really, really thin and really, really hard because it just ain't got much left. And we are burning our herbicides up. We have put all we put all our eggs in Warrant, Outlook, and Ziggler. That's where we're at right now. You tracked um, AMS or some fertilizer as a carrier altogether, no water on Roundup, on control and some of the resistance on the rye grass and Johnson grass? Uh, yes. On our Johnson grass, doesn't phase it. Don't work? We have some good luck on rye grass. <coughs> I tell you, right. Johnson, Johnson grass is making a comeback. It's it's making a big comeback. It was kind of isolated, but now it's just it's it's going. It's in Louisiana too. It's not just a big. All right. It's all on you now.